love love is great love is necessary love is beautiful but what is love for most of us love is the greatest excitement and comfort and also the greatest suffering whether love has become a problem or something you cherish the most in your life please go deeper into the matter know what real love is know the myths that surrounds it love never goes wrong it is our misplaced notions that go wrong the following seven points challenge our beliefs and give deeper insight into a matter that affects us the most first the myth of love this is going to be a little tough on us on our concepts and also on our sentimentality there is nothing called love between two human beings or love between a human being and any other object the two human beings can never love each other and man is born in a crowd but he has a deep loneliness within it requires at least two for a human being to be born so man is always born in a society on one hand man being born in a society has several others to relate to yet none of those relationships are ever able to fill up the hole in the heart man keeps relating in various ways but that which he wants is hardly ever supplied by the others we would not be mistaken if we say that others are fundamentally incapable of satiating your deepest urge no human being can give you what you really want and to expect it from a person is to place your hope strongly you would be disappointed that which we call as love is usually just a misplaced hope love has to be seen differently and when you look at it differently then you will be able to throw brighter and clearer light on what human relationships are second our love is conditional in reality what happens between any two human beings is just a play of circumstances it is a play of the elements it is a play of the situations it is always conditional you require a little bit of heat a little bit of intimacy and anything can combine even inert gases react don't they all you need is suitable conditions you cannot love the other person you cannot only you can only relate to the other person take a simple example of hydrogen and oxygen a hydrogen molecule relates with an oxygen molecule there would be a certain chemistry a certain bonding a certain transformation when the two of them come together so it happens with you also it is also possible that it appears as if the two of you have lost your individuality and something new has resulted in this bonding obviously when hydrogen and oxygen come together neither hydrogen nor oxygen is left so you may be tricked into believing that both hydrogen and oxygen have gone disappeared they are not gone they are just hiding the molecule can split any day any moment the conditions will change the molecule will spill split you will find that the oxygen and hydrogen have reappeared they were never really gone they were just hiding themselves that is our human love as objects meet objects objects are given to exist only in certain conditions when those conditions change the objects change you take a molecule of water and you change the conditions around it and the molecule would be no more we are all just objects and objects cannot relate to the other objects except in a in an 
objectified way then we either agree that love too is an object or we look closely at our concepts our definitions objects can get attracted objects can feel repulsed but objects cannot love each other third cheated in love sodium had a great fondness for chlorine as long as only chlorine are available as the other halogens to join the queue now chlorine is not really a favorite other ones are available it is also happening everywhere we hardly have any choice or let's see our choices are predetermined one set of conditions it is certain what choices we are going to make another set of conditions it is a certain what choices we are going to make it is wise to discount the possibility that this body of flesh and blood and this mind of thoughts and concepts can ever love any other body or mind yes we do relate but that relating is just chemistry so forget about loving everybody you cannot even love anybody it is full hardy to discriminate some relationships as more real and substantial than others sometimes you would think that some relationships have more substance you would think that some relationships are more soulful heartful they are not please get rid of this notion fourth hollow in the heart that hollow is something that no electron can feel bad in fact we keep exploring all the chemistries just to fill up the that particular hollow that sense of incompleteness that is why we are so restless in our relationships fifth what really is love when all your hopes are dashed when you know that love is simply not possible between human beings that is called love now you are the same for everybody now you are unconditionally belonging to the universe to know that love is impossible is love love heals because it treats you all your false hopes love is the biggest healer because it prevents you from getting any more hurts it is not easy to know that not at all easy to know that men keeps expecting men keeps expecting that some day somewhere he will find that magical object will satisfy the heart men keeps expecting a complete breakdown of that expectation is love sixth what is worthy of love bring clarity into your life recognize your bondages and get rid of them get rid of the incompletion by knowing your true nature by knowing the self knowing the self is the only worthy object of love and it is so gigantic that you cannot even call it an object it is so big so total so filling so occupying so very compelling that it leaves no space for you to continue as you are that which would give you total satisfaction will not let you remain the petty one you are vastness comes to the vast you are what you want if you want to change who you are then you will have to want something radically different from yourself your destination your desire decides your constitution you become what you intend to achieve and be if you love the mud you will become an earthworm if you love the sky you will grow wings you your entire personality will change if you really want to 
fundamentally change the way you are then you have to have a goal that is tremendously brilliant supremely attractive and surrender to it to want something different to take something totally different as your goal you will have to go against yourself you will have to bear that suffering your entire system will then be forced to adjust itself rather take a rebirth in order to achieve that goal do you have the kind of love that will enable you to willingly pass through that suffering that's the question that you have to answer only in love can there be a radical transformation most of us are loveless dry beings unfortunately that's not our destiny but that's how we have made the choice they say it was the love of the flower that turned the caterpillar into the butterfly without that love appear the metaphor morphis would not have happened go find a flower 7 how to love yourself and relate to the other can you take care of anything without knowing what that thing is yes love is about taking care of yourself but to really take care of yourself you must first know what you really real uh, what your real problem are you must know what you really want you must first know what keeps you afraid nervous alert and then you will be able to take care of yourself if your definition of yourself separates you from the world then this self that is separate from the world is anyway not worth loving if your definition of love is that you and the world are separate entities then this you is anyway not worth loving because that is not the real you first of all figure out who you are and what your relationships with the world is if you really love yourself while being apathetic to the world that self concept which places you as separate from the world is a flawed concept like all concepts are that concepts will only lead to violence when you really love yourself then you realize that your welfare and the welfare of the world are inseparable real carnal love real worldly love is not about trying to gain something from the other or trying to bring happiness to the other trying to exchange pleasure with the other it is about seeing that the other is so much like you and who are you you are the suffering one you are the one that experiences incompleteness loving yourself is about giving yourself that which would actually give you contentment and freedom from suffering love yourself enough to give yourself the highest do not settle for something lowly mediocre and the other is just like you the other too wants that which can get rid of the incompleteness within the other too wants to get rid of the hollow in the heart the other too is suffering this realization of commonness between you and the other is love let your love for the highest dictate the way you relate to others assist them as you assist yourself love the highest because you love yourself love the other because he is so much like you